G'day, it's Vaughn from Grave Forsaken here. Um, I'm going to be doing a series on the history of Grave Forsaken, going right back through my own musical history with Christian metal. And I'll be taking you through pretty much the whole story over the space of a few episodes of Grave Forsaken TV. So I really hope you enjoy the, uh, the story. Um, there will also be some video footage and some various bits and pieces. Really, the story for me starts right back in about 1994. A really good friend of mine called Chris Greaves had uh, put me onto Christian Metal uh, late 93, early 94, and we decided that we would like to do something, something of that nature ourselves. So it was around about April 1994. Uh, we were both attending a youth group at the time. And Chris has been writing some of his own material. And he wrote this uh, song called The Devil Won't Win. And um, I used to play drums at the church at the time. I was, like I say, it was 1994, I was only 15. And the two of us um, got together that afternoon um, of this particular youth group night where they were having a concert. And we worked on this... Um, this song, The Devil Won't Win, uh, and that was that was pretty much the start of, um, of my career in Christian metal. Uh, pretty inauspicious start, but, you know, of significance. The name we gave ourselves for that very first show in 1994 was um, a bit cheesy, but I've got a bit of a reputation of cheese. Um, it was anti-devil, but it was done, it was done with earnesty. Uh, so that was the first name of, of the band. We had such a good time that we always intended on getting back together um, and doing more, but it actually you have to fast forward until 1996, uh, nearly two years later when we actually got together. Uh, we're still going to the church in memory. And uh, I, I played drums and Chris played guitar and did vocals and we started rehearsing. Devil Won't Win was on the set and uh, Chris started writing some new songs such as Years of the Beast, um, Material Disease, um, I'll Be Back, there was quite a number of them, Mark of the Beast, uh, that we we um, put together and you know, I, it was, there was just such a raw honesty in those days um, about what we did. Um, and it was just a really great time and, and Chris and I used to, you know, we got along like a house on fire and um, just really, really good time. <laughs> another guy um, come in called uh, Richard Wilkinson and he's like Chris also um, still a friend of mine and he um, he was to play guitar um, he often didn't used to turn up to practice uh, he was a really good friend of mine but maybe didn't quite have the, um, the heart for the music that we did in those early days we um, 1996 the name we first name we gave ourselves was Mephibosheth uh, named after the Mortification song of, of Primitive Rhythm Machine. We're both Mortification fans and uh, they were a heavy influence. Um, we decided that Mephibosheth was not really a very, um, whatever reason, good name. So we thought of another one and again, being Mortification fans, uh, um, I came up with the name Sanctification, which obviously sounds like Mortification. and. I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't um, related. So we started jamming under the name Sanctification for a while. This is Chris on the guitar. Pretty obvious. This is just a, this is a genuine Sanctification practice session. Yeah. But, uh, we just had a really good prayer session and it's going to be a really great, uh, great practice. There's Richard. Just get set up. Running away from the camera. There's the drums I use in our church practices. So this is this is how it all started, people. And then it was uh, late 
96, early 97. I took a trip over to Melbourne and I um, caught up with uh, Jason Sherlock, uh, former more drummer. He was, he was still in Paramecium at the time. And um, he said to me, oh, sanctification sounds a bit like mortification. Why don't you uh, shorten it to sanctified? And um, I was a huge, you know, still am a fan of Jason's. And, uh, you know, I took his advice on board and I, I thought, well, you know, he's right, it does sound a lot like mortification and it was an obvious um, homage to them, that name. So I got back from Melbourne and I discussed it with Chris and we agreed that um, changing the name would be a good thing. Um, so we became Sanctified around early 97. Uh, we still hadn't played any shows, <clears throat> apart from that very first one in 94. Um, we got a guy called Scott Napier in on bass. Um, he used to go to our church at the time and uh, was a really good guy. I haven't caught up with him for a long time, but in the end, um, yeah, he was going to have to learn how to play bass to be in the band. He, he used to run our website um, way back in those early days. I used to go to his house and do web updates and things like that uh, on the old Sanctified website. Some of you may even remember, I'm not sure if anyone ever noticed. Uh, but you know, we, we were really pleased and proud of what we did in those days. So um, we, we got, had Scott and Richard in the band, but uh, neither of them really used to rehearse all that often. And um, Chris and I were keen to, to move forward with a stable lineup.